Good morning. Uh, it's my great pleasure and honor and privilege to speak about Muriel too on the occasion of her 100th birthday. I'm an import into the family, uh, me and my wife, Shirley, uh, who is the niece of Muriel. A few days ago, uh, we at our cabin east of uh, Campbell's, we had a, a wonderful birthday celebration, which included Muriel's nephew, Neil, his wife, Linda, and uh, great nieces and nephews, uh, Leah, Jonathan, and Alan. It was uh, a wonderful affair. The sight of a lake, sitting on a deck, looking over there, and celebrating. We wish to acknowledge the large role that the United Church has played in the lives of Europe and her mom, Annie. They were both active in the Sumas United Church, and when it closed, they began attending Carmen United. They attended weekly and volunteered generously. The church was a cornerstone of their lives. The Toops were one of the earlier settlers in the Chilliwack area. The day was July 10, 1918, when Muriel was born in the house that her grandfather built built in 1890, and that's on Yale Road uh, near Lickman Road, you may be familiar with passing by. 1918 was also the year that the Toops were the first in the area to generate their own electricity, and this was followed later when they were first with indoor plumbing and, wait for this, flush toilets. <laughs> 1920, uh, Muriel's brother Ken was born, but not in the house, in the hospital this time. Muriel got the honor of being in the house, born in the house. Muriel attended Oxford School, and she walked the two miles there regularly, but sometimes she was driven there in God weather. And later, when the private school bus uh, came along, uh, apparently she was hitching right from that, while Ken continued to ride his bicycle to the Oxford School. Muriel has had a lifelong interest in history, and this works well with her incredible photographic memory. Um, she was a member of the Chilliwack Historical Society, and people uh, often consulted her, and in fact still do, about the history of the area, and certainly for the uh, details of the family history. Muriel enjoyed more travels than most uh, in her earlier years, and she continued on with a traveling habit later into her life. In 1923, when she was just six and a half years old, her father Albert, at age 34, sold all the milking cows, and along with uh, Muriel's mother Annie and brother Ken, they embarked upon an unheard of trip to California. The younger cows and horses were maintained by a hired hand, uh, a big party with the neighbors, streets, the Robbies, the Clarks, the Hepburns, and other troops sent them off. Much of the trip at that time traversed gravel, narrow gravel roads through the mountains. And it must have been quite a, quite a, quite a trip. And they didn't even have hotels to stay in because they weren't invented yet. So they stayed in like <laughs> hotels. Um, many flat tires later, they, they arrived in Long Beach where they stayed for four months. Uh, really a remarkable trip for that time and place. In 1937, they, <laughs> they did it again. They actually packed up and repeated that trip for three months this time, crossing the Batua, the Golden Gate, and the San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridges in the year that they were open. This time, two hired men took care of the animals, and the men's room and board cost the tubes $20 a month. Later, Muriel travel to, travels took her to Great Britain, uh, the Caribbean, Hawaii, and throughout Canada and the United States. In her working life, Muriel uh, spent 10 years as a casual at the Chilliwack Golf and Country Club, and also five or six years uh, as a casual at Norman Manor, where she uh, uh, worked as a matron taking care of the uh, senior residents there. Muriel and her family and her parents uh, moved out of the family home when uh, Ken and the new bride Phyllis got married. Construction of their new home began in 1947, but they lived at their Cultus Lake cabin for a couple of years during the big flood of 1948, 
and awaiting the completion of their new house. In the later 50s, the house was moved uh, basically a field away to the west to its present location at the foot of the driveway of the, of the first house, of Kenneth Phillips' house. Uh, that was, happened because the Trans Canada Highway got pushed through with all of its lanes, and uh, they, were, they were very close. This actually bothered me. In the late 60s and 70s, my friends and I did a lot of hiking in the Tillowak Valley. And every time I passed Muriel and Annie's house, I, I got really irate because how could the government possibly slap a big highway right in front of these people's door? And it really bothered me. Uh, that was 10 years before I had ever met a two. Uh, and uh, then I found out they, they kind of liked it there because uh, the cars going by were quite entertaining to me. <laughs> so, it turned out also good for uh, to have the houses close to one another, especially for Shirley and the brothers Neil and Bill. Uh, it, was a, it was a great way for them to get raised because whenever they got in trouble, they could rush over to uh, Aunt Muriel and, and uh, their grandmother's house. And it was also a great place to hang out with, uh, with uh, their aunt and grandmother. Muriel's mother lived there until 1992 when she died. Uh, just two months short of her 100th birthday. In later years, it was good to have uh, Ken nearby for mutual assistance and company. After brother Ken passed, Muriel at age 90 moved to the Linwood. This proved to be a good move because she's happy there. Uh, and she's amongst old friends and has made new friends as well. Muriel has enjoyed and continues to enjoy good health which coupled with an extremely positive attitude allows her to enjoy life. And we're, we're kind of the beneficiaries of that because those of us around here uh, benefit from having her make our lives more enjoyable. Yay. <laughs> As I speak representing Muriel's family, I wish to express the extremely high regard that we all hold for her. I know that this is true for all of us who have had the honor and privilege to know her. She's truly a remarkable woman, and our family has been deeply blessed by her warmth, unflattering support in all aspects of our lives, and her genuine goodness and love. Happy 100th, Miriam. <laughs>